Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Isabel and I am the Crafty C2. As you can tell, today's video is going to be just a little bit different because I've filmed this video and edited this video multiple times and each time I don't know what's happening, but it won't upload. So, and I've been sitting on this video for too long and I just really want to get this out for you guys because I know a lot of you have been asking for it. For today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a layered SVG and to create this layered SVG, I'm actually going to go ahead and use this, this programming right here called Inkscape, And um, just an image from the internet. Not hard. It's just mostly playing around with the settings and what you like. My Inkscape might look a little different than yours. I'm using a Mac. I know that Inkscape and Windows looks different. Let's get started. Let's go ahead and go to your internet and your search engine. I'm using Google. Type in the image that you're looking for. But for today's video, we're doing Winnie the Pooh. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter Pooh. And the key word to this is gonna be clip art. So whenever you're looking for an image, to create into an SVG file, you want to type in the word clip art. It'll be, it's going to make it easier to find the type of image. So let's go ahead and click images. So when picking an image, you want to try to avoid, especially in the beginning, when you're just getting the hang of creating your own SVGs, images like this with the shadowing. It's going to make it more complicated to create an SVG. Not impossible, but just harder because it's the programming will pick up those shadowing. Also look at the outlining of the image. For example, this one. You have to remember that the way you present it, to your die cut is the exact same way it's going to cut it. If you like the rigid edges like this, this is what image would work with you. But if you're trying to get those clean, smooth lines like this one, you would go for an image more like this. I'm actually gonna go ahead and select this one. I feel like this one's great. This one is gonna be an easy one to turn into a layered SVG. So what you're gonna do is right click, and copy image and you're gonna go back into Inkscape you're gonna right click again and and click paste you can if you want it's up to you save it and then up upload it with import keyboard you're gonna press 3 that zooms into that image that you are selected we're gonna go to path and you're gonna go to trace bitmap Okay, let's move him over a little bit so you can see. We have here a live preview of what he looks like. And if it doesn't have it, you just click update. And I'll bring it up. All right, so what we're trying to do is basically just create the outlining. And here's where we're going to create the outlining. Every image will be different. Because outlining, you're going to treat it basically like a coloring page. So that you can create the colors of the image. And also the out the shadow see the the blackness because if i press okay he actually came comes out like this i don't want the t-shirt to be dark so we're going to go ahead and click delete we're going to go back and click the image and we're going to play around with these numbers so we're going to bring it when you bring it down click update and see what it does you see a little bit of it got erased one more down and then press update and look nothing now on his shirt let's go ahead and click okay to see if this is something that we like and if everything is perfect Ooh, i grabbed the wrong one we're actually gonna put them here and look at your image see that everything is correct you can actually zoom into this image by by pressing three and uh, let's see the only thing i would fix right here is just erase the thing of the name but other than that, the image looks great. There is another way to do this. It doesn't work for every image, and I don't like doing it, but it's just my preference. And I'll go ahead and show you that. And I'll tell you why when I pull it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and click back into the main image that we got from the internet. And let's press the negative all the way down. Once it's in zero, zero, and you update, there's not gonna be an image you can press just press it one time and again this depends complexity of the image but it's bits of very simple image like this one just by clicking one and pressing update it'll show you a preview and you might not see the difference that's why i always say click ok and then drag it out and see and see it because you might not be able to see it okay 
So let's go ahead and exit this because I got I got two of the outlinings. Okay, let's press five. Pressing five makes this takes you to the square. It makes the square the center. Okay, so let's grab this image and bring him closer so I can show you the difference and why I don't personally like doing that. Again, it's just my preference. It might just it might be something that you like. Okay, so let's press four and this is gonna bring zoom you in. The image selected is the one that I said I don't like to do and it's not my preference. And I don't know if you could tell, but the outlining here, it's much thinner, like right here, compared to this image. I like the light outlining to be a little bit much thicker. So then when I do color him in, you can actually see the outlining better. It'd be a little harder to notice. Not that he's going to stay in outlining when I layer him. Like you could tell, I always create a shadow. So if I'm coloring him in, you're going to see less of the smile, less of the nose wrinkles, less of his little chin right here. I want that to show a little bit more and to stand out a little bit more. That's why I like my outlining thicker. And if for any reason you were to just leave it as an outlining and use it, having such a, a thin outlining will make it hard to weed and harder to apply and adhere as long to the surface that you're applying it to. Go ahead and delete that. Just press delete on your keyboard and we're gonna use this one, the one that I prefer. Again, it's all just preference. Okay. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to we're going to zoom in and erase this right here, which is simple. Grab the eraser, which is this one right here. And we're going to erase. You want to make sure that you erase everything because you're if you leave even a speck, your Cricut will pick it up and will try to cut it. You have to remember that. So tr try your best to erase and leave nothing that your Cricut will pick up. Okay. So then just keep gently create those curves. And again, erase. Just bring it down. The selector. And we're going to press 3. You're going to click on an area that has nothing. Nothing. So nothing is selected. You're going to go to the sideways triangle right here. And you're going to click dropper. And you're going to hover over the color. Like I, you could tell there's a little square next to this dropper. For example, here's the, it's picking up this, his skin color and his shirt color. The lining is black. Okay, so you're going to select the color that you want to start working with. I'm going to start doing his, his skin. So we click, you just click it once. And then you're going to go to the bucket. So now you're ready to start coloring. Zooming in to the part that you want and then painting it and then clicking it. Let's do his ears. We're going to scroll down. The programming might lag a little bit, but it's fine. Just give, just <laughs> give it some time. Thing like this where you can't fully see, I don't. I would recommend zooming out because if you leave it zoomed in, it might not even paint it. Or it might actually paint it, but cut off the part that you that's not seeing. So let's zoom out a little bit. And like I said, we're basically now just coloring coloring like if he was a coloring page. And we're going to finish his last arm. Okay. So now we're going to go back to the selector. Click on the image. If you're zoomed in like this, click on the outlining, press 3, and that zooms you out to him. 
just click on the screen so you're deselected from it and you're gonna hold down shift and you're now gonna start so clicking selecting all the things you just colored in you can let go of shift once you selected everything you're gonna go to path and you're gonna go to union now when you do send it to your program your cutting program it knows to cut it all as one just to use one vinyl or whatever you're using as one you see okay so let's do command Z so it to undo the last action clicking on the screen so now nothing is selected we're gonna go again back to this sideways triangle and click dropper and we're going to select the shirt color and then go to back to the bucket you actually don't even need to do this I just do it because it's more visual it's for visual purposes true you have the images true colors but you could actually just select any color down here and then click it in I just like doing this so now we're gonna press control uh, with the scroller on your mouse Z zoom in and we're gonna start coloring in and there you go now we're gonna go ahead and click the select you're gonna click on the outlining press 3 to zoom it out to and then you're going to click on the screen so everything is selected and now you're going to go you're going to hold down shift and select the pieces that you just colored and again back to path and union and now you have a shirt i'm going to go I click command z to undo the move action all right now going to keep him as an outline because when because when layering it's just going to make it impossible we're actually going to turn him into a shadow but before doing that I'm gonna duplicate the outlining just in case in the future i want to use the outlining for another project i have it and i don't have to grab again the image from the internet and start all over make sure you have that outlining selected because you don't want to you don't want to duplicate something else okay again come just move it out of place and then command Z to undo action and just and now you know for sure that you have the outline selected and we're gonna right click and duplicate and then you're just gonna move it out of place so now you have the outlining for maybe another future project and then you're gonna go ahead and grab the outlining here okay so we're gonna go click path and break apart this will create your shadow do not click outside because you will lose the pieces you need it to stay like this so don't click outside don't don't unselect everything so now we're gonna go back to path and you're gonna unify and now that tells everything to become one whole so now if you move it out you have his shadow there you go you created his shadow his his skin and his shirt now you can go ahead and delete the image from the internet because there's no need for it save your project and I'll show you how to upload it to to your design space let's go ahead and click file and save as mine's already is set to the specific location I want it you might if this is your first time you might have to look around and see where you want to set it a thing that I always recommend is having a specific folder for all your SVGs so you they're not all over the place and you know where they are if you do use an Apple products, I actually keep mine all in an iCloud folder. So when it saves, when I save it here in this folder, it actually is already automatically on my phone and in my iPad. So for if any reason I'm I'm trying to do a project and somebody's using my computer, I can just use my iPad with the Cricut Design Space and upload it through there. Let's go ahead and delete this and 
and write in poo just a title as you can tell i've done this multiple times <laughs> just convert it yours might say inscape svg but you're gonna turn that into a plain svg and then you're gonna click save new project maybe later and we're gonna click upload and you're gonna go as you can tell it's already here but let's go ahead and click upload browse and again mine is already set to the folder that i use so if this is your first time um you're going to go ahead and look for that folder but mine is already preset so i'm gonna go ahead and click select because it should be the very f first one it should be the very first one that's here but if not look for it you can always search you're gonna go choose and it automatically is gonna upload it like this it's automatically already gonna bring in like this because it's an SVG the image that you want and if you want to tag anything that's up to you but I usually don't I click Save and voila my image is right here okay so we're gonna just so you can see insert and there it is you from now on from here you can ungroup it delete the one that you don't need and then just click make it it's that simple everything is set already made you can change its color if needed but this was it i hope you guys really enjoyed this video and i'm so sorry for the background noise <laughs> And being completely different from one of my usual videos, I was just trying to get this long overdue video to you guys. And I really hope this helped you be able to learn something from it. Because I know in the die cut world, SVG files are a big thing for us. Anything out or you're a little confused, leave me a comment down below and I'm more than happy to help I'm more than happy to help you. But thank you guys so much for watching. And I promise my next video won't be this messy. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so, you, so you're notified on the next time I post another video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.